If you are a student, creator or professional, this video could save you from making a very expensive mistake. I replaced my laptop with the iPad Pro M5 for 7 days. And here is the truth. The rules are very simple. I locked my MacBook and forced myself to use only the iPad Pro M5 with real work and real deadlines. Some things blew my mind. Others just made me want to throw this thing out of the window. Lighted exported a 10 minute 4K video of mine in 43 freaking minutes. Yep. So is it really possible to get everything done using your iPad? Well, it's not all sunshine and rainbows as you might think. With the M5 chipset, it's more powerful than ever. But the real problem isn't the chipset, it's something else. And it only shows when you are on a deadline. But before that, let's go through all the pros of using an iPad Pro. So my name is Prithviraj and I test tech gadgets so that you don't have to. Let's dive right in. Alright, the primary things that I do on my laptop are managing my schedule, scripting and editing videos. And don't forget creating thumbnails on Photoshop. In case you are a programmer, I guess there are various apps that you can try out, but I don't think VS Code is actually available for the iPad as of now. Alright, the biggest advantage of using an iPad as your primary computer, even if you're using the official Magic Keyboard, it will still take a lot less space compared to your laptop. And on that topic, here's my current hardware setup. I've been using the 11 inch iPad Pro M5, paired with the CSR Keyboard Folio case. The keyboard case completely detaches, so I can switch to tablet mode whenever necessary. Also, I kept my Logitech MX Master 3S nearby, as when I'm doing precision work on photo Photoshop, nothing beats a proper mouse, as the folio trackpad is honestly too small for extended use cases, it's not like the MacBook. But wait till you see my video editing experience, as that was a bit disappointing. Let me start with the wins, because there are genuinely more than I expected. Firstly, I love the display on this iPad, the colors are accurate, and the overall viewing experience is great. So for watching movies and stuff, I was liking this more over here. Same goes for editing photos on apps like Lightroom. The editing experience was much more precise and enjoyable with the Apple Pencil. Scripting was better than my Mac. And I'm not exaggerating. I've recently been using this app called Craft. I really like its clean interface. Also, if Google Docs is something you need, then you should just stick to your laptop, as the iPad app is literal crap. Rather, use it on your browser to get the full Google Docs experience. Now, coming back to my workflow, because of the new and improved stage manager, I could drag articles from Safari directly into my script. The touch type interface has kind of made this process much more smoother. And the best part was the battery life. I was getting 8 to 9 hours of actual work time. On my MacBook, I was getting around 5 hours or maybe 6 if I'm lucky. The efficiency here is just on another level. Email management was shockingly smooth as this alone takes up at least an hour of my day. Because of the lighter form factor, I could sit on my couch with my iPad on my lap for hours without discomfort. I did not miss my laptop even for once during this task. Notion is like a storage unit for my content. Every video idea, sponsor deal and every deadline, it's all organized in my Notion database. But Notion on the iPad was kind of weird, being very honest. I only find Notion's desktop app to be the smoothest. The phone app kinda sucks. The iPad app is slightly better, but for this use case, I was really missing my MacBook. But overall, it was kind of manageable. Todoist is flawless on the other hand. Both work-related as well as my personal tasks are in there. If it's not on Todoist, it doesn't really exist for me. Rather, it was more convenient for me to reschedule my calendar just by using my fingers on Todoist. It takes a few clicks on my MacBook, whereas that wasn't the case here. But on Good Notes, this is where the iPad will absolutely destroy any laptop. I open Good Notes with my Apple Pen and fill out my daily planner template every single morning, time blocking my days, setting priorities, and writing down my goals for that day. This handwritten ritual is a non-negotiable for me. It sets the tone for everything I do that day. I'll leave the link of the planner in the pinned comment if you want to try it out. So far, everything was really smooth and I felt really confident. But wait, the pain is coming right up. Day 4 is when everything started falling apart. I'm about to show you that one thing that absolutely made me wanna quit this experiment. 43 freaking minutes. Remember I said that? We'll get to that in a moment. But before that, I want to show you something even worse. Getting YouTube thumbnails is critical for me. One bad thumbnail can actually kill my video's performance no matter how good the content is. So when I opened Photoshop on the iPad, I was nervous. And I'll be honest, it was pretty good with some major caveats. The Apple Pencil Pro made certain tasks really easier, like cutting out subjects from the background was insanely precise. It was way more accurate than trying to do this with my mouse or the trackpad. I created three full thumbnails during this week and they all turned out great. But here is the problem. Photoshop on the iPad iPad is not full Photoshop. It's more like Photoshop Lite. If you are a professional graphic designer, you will feel the limitations. Plugins like Nick Collection or Topaz Labs simply doesn't exist on the iPad. So while I could create thumbnails, I felt a bit handicapped, like I was working with maybe 70% of my usual toolbox. For simple graphics and social media posts, the iPad version is honestly fantastic. But in case you are a professional designer who requires the full Adobe ecosystem with third-party plugins and those advanced features, you're gonna hit the walls real fast. But you know what? Thumbnails are 
honestly the easy part of my workflow. Everything was going good until I tried to export my first real video. DaVinci Resolve on the iPad Pro M5. I've been using DaVinci Resolve for years. I know inside and out of this app. The iPad version has the exact same interface which initially seemed amazing. But the performance? That's where we need to have a talk about. I was editing a standard YouTube video of mine. 4K footage from my Sony camera. Nothing crazy. As usual just some B-rolls, talking head shots, standard color grading and background music. Literally what I do every single week. For making cuts and color grading, it was really great, I'll have to say. I have access to the full toolbox here unlike on Photoshop. But when I tried to add a fusion effect, the title animations that I use in my videos, the entire app froze for like 5 seconds and I could literally feel my iPad getting warm in my hands. And when the device gets warm, the thermal throttles, the performance will drop to prevent overheating. But the real killer was exporting of course. On my MacBook, a 10 minute 4K video of mine with moderate color grading and some effects will usually take 10 to 15 minutes to render. On my iPad, I timed it 43 freaking minutes for the exact same project. I sat there staring at the progress bar thinking that I could have done this half an hour ago and moved on to maybe playing some games or something like that. When you are on a deadline and you have videos that need to go live, the time difference isn't just annoying, it's a complete deal breaker. Now let me be completely fair. If I was still editing my video like I used to do a couple of years back, I seriously wouldn't have faced any issues. As in if you are starting out, it is an amazing app for you. But with how my videos currently look, that kind of slowed me down. And here is the brutal truth. The M5 chipset is powerful. The benchmarks of course prove that. But the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve just isn't optimized enough. The same way the Mac version is. As of now, the software can't really take the full advantage of the hardware. And this is the core problem of the iPad Pro. It has laptop level power but it's still running on a tablet software. Unless Apple fully commits to making iPad OS as capable for Pro workflows, we are gonna be stuck in the frustrating middle ground. And Apple is actually taking steps like the inclusion of the menu bar. That was something helpful but we still have a long way to go. Now the Files app versus the Finder on a Mac. It's like comparing a tricycle to a sports car. And to make matters worse, you are living in a dongle hell, of course. No SD card slot means you are carrying adapters everywhere. I really started missing my MacBook Pro ports over here. Also please consider hitting that subscribe button if you are finding this helpful and I'll keep creating more such videos. So after 7 days of forcing myself to use only the iPad Pro M5 as my main computer, the real question is can it actually replace my laptop? Here's my honest unfiltered answer. For me, well, not yet. But let me break down properly as it's not all black and white. We have a grey area. Who should genuinely consider the iPad as their main computer? If you are a student primarily taking notes, watching lectures and doing research, the iPad is actually perfect. It might be better than a laptop perhaps because of the Apple Pencil and apps like GoodNotes. Procreate with the Apple Pencil Pro is the absolute best digital art experience money can buy period. No laptop even comes close in this aspect. Rather, here's my own theory. If a MacBook Air is enough for your daily workflow, the iPad Pro Switch wouldn't really be an issue for you. Unless you're a coder, of course. As in, if you're primarily browsing, checking emails, watching videos and stuff, the iPad will make you happier than a laptop. The display is stunning, battery life is incredible, and the portability is unmatched. But who should absolutely not replace their laptop with an iPad? If you're a professional video editor, stick with the laptop. The performance is just not the same as a MacBook as of now. When you're looking for the cinematic and professional videos. Also, if you're a programmer or developer, the iPad is essentially useless for serious work. No proper ID support, no terminal access worth using. So here's my personal takeaway from this experiment. The iPad Pro M5 is genuinely the most powerful tablet ever made. The hardware is laptop class, but it's still a tablet. Hence, I'm adopting a hybrid approach going forward. I'm gonna use my iPad for specific tasks where it genuinely excels, like planning my day in good notes, managing my task in Todoist, and even scripting for my videos. I genuinely had a better experience than a Mac on these tasks, but for heavy video editing or Photoshop work or anything that requires full desktop class software, the MacBook still excels over here. Because when there is a deadline and a video needs to go live in a couple of hours, I simply cannot afford to wait for 43 freaking minutes for it to render, whereas it would take like 10 minutes on my laptop. So here is my final recommendation. Before you buy the iPad Pro to replace your laptop, ask yourself this one critical question. Can you accomplish 90% of your daily work with apps that are there on the iPad OS? If your answer is a yes without hesitation, then go for it. You will probably love it more over here. But if you hesitated even for a second, then buy a MacBook instead. So based on your workflow, can you replace your laptop with an iPad Pro? Let me know in the comments and I'll try to reply back to you with my honest take on that. And if you'd like to see all the apps that I use on my iPad for productivity, then click here on this video and over there I've shared all the apps that I use every single day. See you there.